Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Anand and today we are diving into sub-state machines in Unity's animator. If you have been following along with the series, you have already had a little understanding of how we can set up basic animations like idle, walk, jump and attack. Now let's take things a step further and see how sub-state machines can make your animation workflow cleaner and more efficient. So let's jump right in. Alright, so first off, what exactly are substate machines? Think of them as a way to group related animations together within your animator controller. They help you organize your states, making your state machine much more manageable, especially as your project grows. To create a substate machine, right click in the animator window, select create substate machine and let's name this one movement. Inside this substate machine, we can add states like idle, walk and run. This way, all of our movement related animations are neatly organized in one place. Now let's do the same for our combat animations. Create another substate machine and call it combat. Inside this, we can add attack, block and dodge animations. Now for the attack animation, let's say we want to choose one of these attack animations at random. For that, we can create another substate machine and then select all of these states and simply drag and drop them to add them into the state machine. We can do the same thing for the block animations as well. Next, to transition between these state machines, we need to make use of the entry and exit states. From entry, we can choose to go to any of the following states using parameters. Because we need a default state inside this substate machine to transition to, we need to introduce an in-between empty state and then transition to the attack animations based on any teacher parameter. This integer parameter will be set via code and once we play the attack animation, we transition to exit on exit time set to 1. Entry and exit states gives us the flexibility to control transitions based on game logic. See how clean that looks? To pick a random animation, I personally believe that blend trees are the way to go. We will look at blend trees in a future video. So up until then, we will stick to these states. Okay. This approach of creating animator controllers with the help of substate machines is completely flexible. For the combat substate machine, we can take advantage of any state and then transition to attack, block or dodge based on respective triggers. It is to be noted that when you transition to a substate machine, Unity will show a pop-up of all states and state machines inside it and we can connect this transition directly to any state inside it. But I do not recommend connecting to this directly. Because we are using the entry and exit states, when we transition, I recommend you choose state machine and then choose the name of the substate machine that you want to transition to and not anything else. So here we transition to substate machine block. This means we are connecting to the entry of the block state. We will also transition on a trigger called block. There is also this up state here inside a substate machine. With this, you can basically transition to any other state in this layer directly. This is like a second exit. However, I highly recommend to stay away from that because this makes things easy and coupled. In the next video, we'll talk more about why that is with a practical example. So stay tuned for that. This is of course one way to do it. The cool thing is that we can connect attack, block and dodge to the exit of the combat substate machine, which means it goes back to the base layer and we can connect combat to movement. This means once we're done with a particular type of combat, we can go back to movement. This is just a simple way of setting it up. This is of course doable and nobody is going to know. And I just wanted to demonstrate how we can use substate machines like a group layer in Photoshop. We can use them any way that we want. It's completely flexible and all approaches are valid. Now let's break down some ideal substate machines that you may want to create for most game characters. Starting off with locomotion. This includes your basic movement animations like idle, walk, run and jump. It's the core of your character's movement. Combat. Here you include all your attack animations, blocking, dodging, etc. This keeps combat actions organized separately from general movement. 
You can also use additional sub-state machines within these state machines as well. Crouching. If your game involves stealth or crouch mechanics, it's helpful to have a dedicated sub-state machine for crouching animations, making transitions to and from crouching more manageable. Interaction. This includes animations for interacting with objects like picking up items, opening doors, etc. Emotes. For games that include character expressions or gestures, having a separate sub-state machine for emotes can keep these animations organized. Last but not the least, special abilities. This contains states for special abilities or powers unique to the character, such as dashing or teleport or magic spell casting or something. All right, now let's talk about when to use substate machines over layers. In the previous video, we've talked about animation layers in which we've organized states based on different layers, but that's not the ideal way of doing things in most cases. We should learn to use substate machines. We use substate machines when we want to organize a large number of animations into manageable groups. It's great for readability and maintenance. On the other hand, Use layers when you need to animate different parts of the body independently, like having upper body animations for shooting while the lower body handles walking. Essentially, a sub-state machine can be used efficiently to create a complex animation system, or we can use it simply like a group layer in Photoshop and squish states together and make things clean. And that's a wrap on sub-state machines. They are incredibly powerful for organizing and managing your animations in Unity. I hope this video helps you understand how to effectively use them in your projects. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. In the next video, we'll take a look at a practical example of how to use sub-state machines to set up an animator controller for a complex character. So it's gonna be awesome. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya. Bye-bye.